Are you looking to learn how to make a needle felted lobster? If so, then you're on the right video because today I'm going to share with you everything you need to know to make one of these and more. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video, a needle felted lobster tutorial. My name is Iceland and I'll be your fiber artist host and on this channel Snowflake Forest Felting I share needle felting tutorials like this one and have needle felting videos and share product reviews from time to time so if you're new and this interests you please consider subscribing and if you want to know more about anything you see on this channel be sure and check the links down in the description below this video or leave a comment I'd love to connect with you there and as always if you think these videos may help someone please share them where you can also, I wanted to give a big thank you to the last 10, 20 or so of you who have subscribed. Now, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to make your needle felted lobster. You're going to want some needle felting needles, your foam surfaces to protect your surface and have an area to work while you're felting with your needles, a tape measure to measure your project so you know what size it is, a pair of scissors to trim up your project when you're done. These ones are slightly curved so they work wonderful for doing that. And they're nice and tiny and sharp and pointed to get into all the little tiny spots. And then you're going to need some wool. We're using a little bit of core wool in this project to save on not using as much color. But that'll be just for the body for the most part. And then you're going to want some variations of color. I have some batting here in four different shades of blue. It's kind of aqua color as well. Some red and purple. And then here I'm going to be working with a little bit of acrylic wool to add some touches to it. This one here has a mix of colors going through the red and the aquamarine. And then I have a little bit of some actual red, kind of in a ruby color. This little purpley mauve color. And then this really deep color to be adding just some final touches with this. And remember, I'm going to have all this linked down in the description below for you. You can go and check out more there. Now, let's get started felting. To begin, take out your needle felting needle. And then you're going to want to take them out of core wool and roll it, smash it, felt it all down. When you do this, you can get an idea of how much it's going to be condensed to once you start felting it. And it's going to be easier for you to felt than if it was all loose like this. You can squeeze it. That also gives you an idea. You're going to want this to be oblong shaped and towards the tail. It's going to be a little thinner. Then take your needle and just start piercing the wool. And you're going to continue doing this until your project is completely firm. You're going to roll it around and felt it from all angles, just like so. Okay, and then if you need to take a little more wool to make the top part where it gets to the head a little bit wider, just add some on, wrap it right around it, and then just continue felting this until it is completely firm. You're going to need to have patience at this part because it's going to take you a little bit. And you want to do this right because once you start to add color if it's not nice and firm it's not going to look smooth here you can see a little closer just going straight in and out the top of it is wider and then we get narrow as we get to the bottom of the tail you can check the length if you need i usually make my projects around four inches in size the body is going to be a little bit smaller because i am going to account for the front pinchers So if you have any spots that are creating a little bit of a hole or an indent, just go ahead and add a little more wool, tilt it right on just like so, much more smoothed out. of your core loose wool here and you're going to want to create the mouth part onto your lobster so this is just going to be kind of a sharp little point we're going to attach on to here we're adding this to the larger end i'm going to go around from every angle and fill down towards the point and also attach it at the same time Add any more, just 
grab a little bit more, and then repeat that process until this part is completely felted to a point. All right, and then once you have it felted, like so, it's gonna be time to mesh your wool colors. This can get a little messy, just a warning. So make sure you're doing this in a workspace where you can get it all cleaned up. For this lobster, for the most part, the body is going to be purpley blue color, but as it gets towards the tail, it's gonna be more blue, and as it gets towards the pinchers, it's gonna be more red. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a fade in each direction. A lot of wool here. I'm not going to need this much. I want the core of the body to be the deeper purpley colors. So the core of the body is going to be a mesh of all these colors. And up towards the pinchers, I'm going to use just these three colors in a little bit. And then the tail, the three blues. If you want to know more about meshing wool, I have a whole video on this and I will link it above for you and below. But basically, you're just going to pull the wool back and forth, all apart. And the more you do this, the more blended it's going to become. If you don't do it enough, when you start felting, it's just going to look really spotted. So if you really want it smooth, I recommend spending some time on this process. your mix is all made it's time to put them on to your little lobster you've got going here I'm gonna change foam surfaces because I do not want this color going into this one Ooh, I have a little blue and red side here that it's gonna work pretty well all right then you can take a chunk of the middle color and then you're just gonna begin to wrap it around completely and felt it on take some of the red color add that all around the point and the blue color and add it around the base and you can fill in with your mesh went a little low so I'm just moving what isn't completely attached up towards the red and then just make sure you get any spots where you might see that under color bone colored wool covered and then just continue felting this until it is all nice and smoothed out. So at this point, if you want to start picking like a top and a bottom of your lobster, and then also starting to narrow out the part where their tail will be. That's pretty good. It doesn't have to be completely rounded down here. I liked this side, how it looked more blended than this side. You can see how this is pretty not looking blended. Take a little wool to make this more blended and not such an obvious line. Once you've finished getting most of this felted, it's time to work on the tail. This is going to be done mostly in blues, and it's going to have like four parts. The outside is going to be a little wider than the two inside parts, and it's going to be pretty thin. So the center back tail fin is going to be a little darker than the outside, and even around the edges you're going to want a little lighter blue. And then you can even use a little bit of your lightest blue to go around the very outside of the fins. So they're going to look a hint kind of like this. I don't know if that kind of helps, but we're going to want to mesh it and blend it and you want an even amount of all the colors So to start I'm going to blend these two and then I'm going to blend those two And then even blend a hint of all four blues and then do the same process here that you did the last time you blended And then 
once you finish blending your wools, it is time to make the tail. So there's going to be the four thin parts you're going to felt, and then you're also going to felt a little bit of a centerpiece for it as well. And this can all be done in the darkest colors of wool. I'm going to start by adding on the center fin. I'm going to attach it like so, front and back. If you felt up and in like this, it's not going to look all like a separate piece. It will help blend it. If you need to add a little more wool to make it blended, just grab a pinch and do so. And then this part is going to take a little bit of time to do because you're not going to use a lot of wool for this because you're going to want it to be thin and you're going to do a lot of flipping back and forth. You're going to want to make it nice and rounded and give it a little bit of a point. When you're felting really thin objects, this is a time consuming process and can be hard to do because it'll want to make holes or lumps. So just be patient with your wool when you're felting it and felt all over. Don't keep felting it and bunching it into one spot. And then once it's pretty well felted, you'll still have a lot to go. It's okay to go ahead and grab some wool for the next two fins that you're going to add on. So using a bit of the darker mesh and then a mixed mesh of all the colors. This one is going to be a little wider. I'm going to felt from all angles. Be sure to attach it. And then do the same thing for the other side. Try to get the same amount of wool. That's why it's good to do it at the same time. So that way you don't end up with a lopsided tail. Alright, I know this looks really big at the moment. But we're going to get it felted down. Now we want to get the next outer fin made as well. So I'm using a little bit of the mesh of all four and then adding the lightest wool on the edge. I'm gonna add this on down to the point here as much as possible, not onto the side. All right, so that's looking like a pretty rough tail there, but you can see how there's five separate parts to it, four fins and then the very center. Now you're just gonna continue felting this and shaping them until they're nice and felted like the rest of your project. I can't stress how important it'll be to flip it back and forth here at this point. to be done on the tail. I'm going to go ahead and put it aside for the moment and start working on the legs. Those are going to be a mesh of the blue colors. I have a little bit left from working on the tail. I'm going to create a little bit more. So there's four legs on each side and closer to the body I want them to be the lighter blue. I have a little bit of the body color left over so I'm going to mesh with the majority of the blue and a little bit of that. And since the legs are really thin and narrow it's not going to take a ton of wool. And they're each going to be kind of three segmented. So we're going to have the three different colors. So I'm going to make a little bit more of the darker blue mix and the lighter blue mix. If you roll it together in your hands like so, really well, that's going to give you an idea of what the leg will come out to. It definitely is going to shrink up some. That's about enough for one side. Do about double that and that'll be enough for each side. So then just go ahead and keep meshing the wool until it's nice and one smooth color. I'm gonna just blend these in with this one as well. That way it's even and they don't look maybe one darker or one lighter. you have all your wool blended it's going to be time to make the little legs so you're going to want to break it apart into eight segments so that way they're all even now you'll take one of each color i'm going to put the rest aside here and take them line them up and then just roll them between your hands like so and then it's going to be time to felt it and then again, you're going to want to leave a little bit of the end loose that you attach onto the lobster. And then this rest, you're just going to felt. Just continue to roll it. 
and then you're gonna repeat this process for all eight legs. All right, and then check your leg length. See how it's coming along. If it's too short or too long, if you need to add any more wool, or maybe, like I do, need to cut away any wool. I'm gonna cut this about in half. And then just felt the tip to a point again. All right, so you can put these legs aside now and it's time to start working on the front pincher claws. We're gonna do these mostly in red and purple and then this leftover lighter blue mesh we're gonna use as well. And then go ahead and just mesh this wool together. All right, now it's gonna be time to felt the front two pinchers. Divide your wool into half. I'm gonna pick a little piece out for the arm attachment. Doesn't have to be very big. Roll it between your hands, and then you're gonna have a pincher on each side, and you want the one larger than the other. You're gonna want them to be as even as possible, and then it's gonna be time to start felting it. I'm just gonna put them together kind of like a Y there. Felt it as one solid pincher. So you felt it begin to shape it. You're going to leave this very tip part loose. You're going to want to flip it and felt it from all angles and then continue this process until you have a completely felted pincher. one isn't completely felted but go ahead and get your next one started because you're going to want these to match and then you can work on them at the same time. Once you have those done, it's time to make the antennae, so you can set those aside. These you can just make in a solid color. Roll them. Do not want them as big as <laughs> feet, right? These need to be more narrow. This is not going to take very much wool and isn't going to be very easy to felt either. But you'll have patience and make it happen. You want to make them at the same time so you know they're the same size. So roll the wool between your hands until they feel the same. All right, now you can start felting them. You leave one end unfelted that you'll use for attaching. Now at this point, give them a really good rub like so. That's going to get those fibers all nice and rolled in and felted to each other. It's going to be time to start putting your lobster together. So to start, you're going to want to add your pinchers on. To do this, simply fray the part that you didn't felt. Then you're going to attach it right onto the side of your lobster and then start felting it on. You want to attach the other one as well. So 
so secure, go ahead and set it aside for a minute. I'm going to work on these legs for a little bit now. I'm going to use some of this blend, and then at each part on the leg where the color changes, I'm going to wrap it around, and then just felt it down in. This is going to help differentiate it into three sections. There you can see just like that. And then I also want to create a bend in the leg, so I'm just going to fold it in half and tilt it back and forth and all around, and then also in half, and then you can see this leg is going to be ready to attach, but I'm going to go ahead and set it aside and finish all the rest of these, so you can go ahead and work on that as well too. done, you're going to pick out the layout for them. So if you have any that maybe you feel like look more like a hind leg or a front leg, just whatever makes them look the most even, map out how you're going to put them on. Now you can take your scissors and on the side you're just going to want to trim a little hole where you're going to insert the first leg. Take it right there and then felt it until it's nice and secure. If you see any spots you need to add any wool, just be sure and do so. You don't want any of the white coming through. And then just like that, you have the first leg felted on. And then you're going to do the other side and make sure it's directly even. And then just continue this process until you have all the appendages attached. the same process for the little antennae. Alright, and now you're getting there. Look at that. It's time to add some final touches to it. I'm going to use a little bit of this wool. I want a blend of both colors, the green and the red. Try to get the same amount here for each side. And just on the last tail fin. I'm going to create a little bit of an arch with this. You can see I added it on just like so. And repeat the same thing for the other side. And then I'm going to grab these three colors. Starting with your darkest color, just grab a little bit. You're going to create a line on the back with it. Roll it between your fingers to help create the line on the back with it. You're going to want it to have a little bit of an arch. So attach it down in and felt it up and over. And then you can do another one. The same color. Maybe a little bit thicker this time. Start in the center. And felt it down and over. And if it's too long, just trim off the excess and tuck the fibers right down in and then you can grab some of the next color lay it on top so I'm going to do this one a little closer to the tail dark color, ball it in your fingers, take the two eyes and they're going to go just above the antennae here, really close to each other, just like that. See they're popped up a little bit. And then I want to go even smaller yet, so I'm going to trim a piece of this top part off little wedge in there. And 
and then I can fill it closer and tighter in as well too. Even smaller yet. Again, I'm just going to use a little bit of extra wool here. Not too much to help secure that and felt the pieces together. And then just continue felting this until it's all nice and smooth. Now, to show you, this is actually pretty simple. You're going to make something larger and just add more wool. I'm going to wrap this loose wool all around it and just begin felting it on. So having this added on is going to make it more look like a pincher claw and not so much like a wrench. And then just continue this felting from all angles until it is completely felted like the rest of your project. Same on the other side so that way they are looking as even as possible. Finishing that up, felt anything you see that still needs felting, you can go and trim away any of those excess fibers, smooth it all out. And then I would recommend trimming this over a trash can in a well lit area so you can see all the little fibers and don't have a mess in your work area either. And then once you've finished trimming up your project completely from all angles, Everything's all smoothed out. You are done with your needle felted lobster. And here's a look at this one a little bit closer. Alright, that's it. That's everything you need to know to make a needle felted lobster and be a fiber artist too. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new. If you did, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share these videos where you can. And if there's something you'd like to see me felt next, drop it down in the comments below. I might just make it. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you in the next one. Happy felting!